All right, so moving on yes, to the next, the next topic. Recipe. Yeah. Um, so kind of speaking a little bit more about, um, again, those digestive oh, issues. Um, and one of them can be constipation. So, you know, more difficulty with passing bowel movements. And there are various forms of degree um, and various reasons that it might occur. Okay, so it might be because of your eating habits. It might be because of medications. Um, or the treatment that you're receiving. So everybody is different, um, and it's always great to have a conversation with your doctor um, about you know, whether there is some sort of medication or something that you might need to take um, in order to help. Um, however, generally speaking, you really want to make sure that you're increasing specific high fibered foods in your diet. Um, so this is a really great recipe that really focuses on bumping and boosting that fiber. And, and remember that fiber is basically the part of the plant that our body just does not digest. Um, but in conjunction with having those, that type of fiber with lots of liquid, it can soften your stools and have it pass easier. Okay, so um, again, I listed um, some great sources of uh, high fibered foods, but this recipe is specifically looking at some of the um, ones you know that you can have so prunes mangoes um, sweet potato sweet potatoes with the skins um, any type of bean or lentil really good um, high fiber foods all right so this recipe is an interesting one I actually came across um, this recipe when I was doing some recipe development with uh, uh, some some students at George Brown for, for a cookbook and um, it's a version of a dosa, so it's like an Indian pancake, an Indian crepe, um, but from the northern region. And I actually had one of my good friends here at Elixir do some background research from it, because I knew I was going to butcher the name. Uh, but it's uh, Mungdal Chila, so Chila is the actual crepe, the version of it. Um, and it's from the um, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh region. Of northern mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I no, put that. Is that good? Okay, all right. <laughs> so um, it is like a version of a dosa, but it's made with these split mung beans. Now you may have seen mung beans before. They're like these little green sort of pulses of beans. Uh, when it's split um, and hauled, uh, this is what the inside looks like. So almost like a yellow lentil. Um, super high protein fiber. Like these are powerhouse ingredients. Amazing. And you're going to make a pancake batter out of this, which is awesome. So I honestly found it at Loblaws. Uh, you can probably find it uh, at Bulk Barn, um, but um, you know, maybe no frills, I'm sure. I'm sure you can you ask around for it. Yeah, some grocery store, yeah. Sorry? Where they had lentils and beans. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, a Moong Dal, M -O -O. It's, I wrote it down on there. but uh, And so what you want to do is now, Again, every version is probably different, so I'm probably going to be like, there's going to be people out there like, no, that's not how you make it. And this is how we kind of came uh, to ours. Um, but you soak the mung dao. Um, I prefer doing it overnight. Uh, some recipes, at least three hours, um, they say is, is good enough. Uh, but you essentially soak it in the water. You can rinse it out a few times. Soak it with enough water because it will expand a bit. And then drain it well. And then you have your soaked mung dao here. Okay? And that's the base for this entire pancake. And now we're gonna put it into a, bl a blender. I'm not gonna do all of it now, I'll probably just do like a little bit at a time just to make a little bit of batter. So I'll put a few pieces, a few scoops in here. And you can use this like you would any normal beans and lentils, throw it into soups and, and uh, sauces and, and stuff. It's delicious, but this is just another way to handle the, the recipe or the mung dal. And now we're going to add a, just a touch of water, and I'll add a little bit more if I need a little bit more, but I'm looking for the consistency of about a pancake batter. So if, I, if it's too thin, then I'll just start adding a little bit more of the mung dal. If I need some more water, then I'll add some more water. Um, you can season it whatever way you want. Um, a lot of recipes add chilies. That's usually the, the top of the chilies. I didn't add it to because a lot of you might not like heat. Uh, but I'm adding some fresh mint to this. You can add cilantro if you want. Again, usually when I get cilantro in a recipe, someone's throwing a chair at me. So I, I yeah. I'll but stay you with could, you know, and, and you could do any 
Absolutely. Herb we'll put some we'll put some turmeric in, in here too, maybe just a touch. With some black pepper. With some black pepper, yes. yeah. Maybe <laughs> Remember, a pinch we always of salt. like to combine the turmeric with black pepper because the um, antioxidant properties that are found in turmeric are actually better absorbed in your body when you combine it with peppercorn, which is found in black pepper. All right, so I'm gonna give this a whiz. You want to break everything down. Now, if there's anything on the sides, again, just scoop that down. If it's a little chunky, that's okay. But we want to try to get it as smooth as possible. Beautiful. So that did a pretty good job. So you can see, so like a pancake batter, essentially what you want with that. Beautiful. All right. So it's a really nice way of getting fiber in, or increasing the amount of fiber as opposed to, you know, just your typical, like, I'm going to eat whole grain rice or whole wheat, bread, brown rice or wild rice or something like that, right? So it's yeah. Like, it's something a little different, something pretty unique. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna use this batter to make the pancake. So I have my nonstick pan, I added a little bit of oil to this. I'm using grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil has a little bit of a higher smoke point and it's very neutral. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna get the flavor from, from this batter recipe. And then I'm gonna pour in, do about a ladle at a time. I'm just gonna pour from here and probably should have had it higher because I didn't hear the sizzle. But we're going to go about medium high. I want this to be pretty high. And I'm going to just spread it around a little bit. I have a little bit of, there we go. So just kind of, the first one is always the forgiving one, right? You test everything on the first one. And so we have over medium high heat, about a couple minutes per side, okay? And I'm going to show you what it looks like. In a second, we're just going to turn the heat up on that. Now, you can serve this a bunch of different ways. You can serve it as sort of a side if you have uh, like a nice little curry side dish or something like that or um, some different chutneys. We're going to actually make a mango chutney to serve this with. Um, and pretty simple. We're using some mango. I'm actually using frozen mango. We love using frozen mm -hmm. fruit here. Yeah. And again, that's one of those really high fiber fruits. Okay, so papaya, mango, um, rhubarb, all vegetables and fruit have um, fiber, so you can choose whatever you want, um, but mango does have a little bit more. So it's always good if you're experiencing any issues with digestive, with um, constipation, it's great to include those foods. So we're going to put some mango in there, and I'm going to put a little bit of red onion as well. Um, I'll throw maybe a little bit of ginger. I love ginger and mango together. And I'm putting some like nice big slices in there. If you want to grate it, you can grate it. You don't like ginger? Oh, I love ginger. So a little bit of ginger, red onion, and then you can throw some different spices in there. So I have some uh, star anise, which has um, a really nice sort of licorice-y, warm flavor to it. I have some cinnamon bark some allspice, some coriander, you know, make it your own. If you want to just do one spice, just cinnamon, you like cinnamon, just throw cinnamon there. Um, this is just an, a nice way to introduce some of those like warmer uh, kind of spices to it. And that's it. So we're going to throw in here with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and honey. Again, the proportions are on there. I'm not measuring it out for you, but and I'll just use just a touch. I don't need too much honey because the mango already is going to be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I need to add a little bit of water, a touch of water, just add a touch so it starts to help it break down. And the other thing is that um, the, the moong dal also is really high in protein, right? So that's also something that you typically, I mean, you want to have balanced 
meals, want to make sure that you're getting the protein as well. Um, but typically, protein foods like eggs or fish or chicken doesn't have that much fiber. Uh, sorry, protein, right? So this is a great option that kind of has both your fiber and your protein. All right, so I can see, I'll take it off the heat for a second, just so you can have a look at it. And if I just peek underneath, I want to have a look to see if there's any color. I don't have a ton of color yet, so probably just give it maybe a few more seconds. Well, no. you do want to make sure that you're drinking enough liquids with this, okay? Because if you don't, it kind of acts like cement, and it's not going to pass. <laughs> so you really want to make sure that you're um, softening your stool. Um, and just so you know, it doesn't have to be having water, okay, right? So, you know, the general recommendation is at least six to eight glasses or cups of fluid, but also note that you can get that through juice or any type of milk, um, soups, smoothies, right? Just making sure tea, coffee, but as long as it's decaffeinated, um, you know, making sure that you're um, getting enough liquids throughout the day too. Beautiful. Okay. Should we have a look? Let's have a look. So you can use tongs to flip it. I was practicing my tossing yes, of pancakes this morning. Should, I, should we do, do it? it. Yes. Right. Okay, now if it falls then, we just have to ignore it. We have others. All right. Yay! Yay! All right. So I probably could have left it even a little bit longer just to get a little bit more color, but you can already see the color starting to develop on there. Um, and then you just want to, again, get the other side a little bit. Um, I already had quite a bit of the grapeseed oil in there, so I didn't put any on. But while it's cooking on one side, just drizzle maybe a little bit of the grapeseed oil on the other so that it can brown evenly on both sides. Um, but that's essentially it to make your pancake. A couple you know, more minutes on that side. And did a few ahead of time, but <laughs> that's what they look like, right? So we have these... Beautiful, you know, mung bean pancakes, which, I mean, it's pretty wild that that is just lentil. There's no flour or anything in there. It's just the pureed uh, mung bean itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like I said, you can serve it. So the chutney, after about 15, 20 minutes, it'll break down into this really, really nice little spread. And it'll have that sort of sweet and savory uh, sort of feeling with it. And uh, serve that with... The, uh, the chila, the, the crepe, the mung bean crepe. And that's a beautiful little uh, dish there. Yeah. High fiber. High fiber protein, yeah.